Welcome to Unit 1, Video 2, Units and Measurement. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify proper SI units and perform unit conversions using the SI system. And you should be able to perform measurements to the proper degree of precision. So first of all, what is a measurement? A measurement is a quantity that has both a number and a unit. It's the unit that makes a measurement a measurement. So for example, if I say something weighs 125 grams, grams is your unit. That's what makes it a measurement. In chemistry, we use the units of the International System of Measurements, or SI units. It's abbreviated SI because it stands for Système International, which is French for International System. So what are the SI units that we'll be using? We'll be measuring mass in grams, which is abbreviated with a lowercase g. Uh, just a side note about mass. Mass is different from weight, as you might remember from physics. Weight is the force, uh, it, it takes the force of gravity into account, whereas mass does not. Mass is just the amount of matter an object contains. So if you take the same object to Mars and Jupiter and the Moon and Earth, it will have the same mass, but it will have a different weight because the pull of gravity is different in each of those places. For our purposes, these are essentially interchangeable, but it is important to realize that technically they are not the same thing. We'll be measuring length in meters, which is abbreviated with a lowercase m, and we'll be measuring volume in liters, which is abbreviated with an uppercase l. This is the same thing as a cubic meter. This is something we'll talk a little bit more about in class. Um, so a liter and a cubic meter are the same thing. We want to be able to convert between metric units, meaning if we measure something in grams, we want to be able to convert that measurement to, say, kilograms or milligrams. Um, so how are we going to do that? Well, we need to think about the prefixes in the SI system, and these are essentially metric prefixes. These are all the metric prefixes. Don't worry, you don't need to use all of these. We will only be using this small subset. So you'll be responsible for conversions that go anywhere from micro to kilo, but no more than that. So there's a three-step process for converting between units. First, we write the given, which is the value you're trying to convert. Then we select the proper conversion factor. These should include the two units that you are converting between. So in other words, if you're trying to convert from grams to kilograms, your conversion factor should include grams and kilograms. And it must allow your units to cancel. More on this in the next slide. And finally, you cancel your units and do the math. So you might want to pause the video here and write down these steps before moving on. So let's talk about a conversion factor. Conversion factors are essentially values that are equal to 1. As you might know from math class, if you put anything over itself, you have a value equal to 1. So 2 over 2 equals 1, 4 over 4 equals 1. Likewise for conversion factors. So some examples one kilometer over a thousand meters. As you might know, one kilometer is a thousand meters. So by putting one kilometer over a thousand meters, we've essentially put something over itself. So it's equal to one. It might be easier to see if you take the example of 60 seconds over one minute. As I'm sure you know, one minute is 60 seconds. So essentially we're putting 60 seconds over 60 seconds or one minute. So these values are equal to 1. Because they're equal to 1, they won't change the numeric quantity that we're working with. They will change the numeric value, however. So for instance, if we're converting from 1 kilogram to meters, we might end up with 1,000 meters rather than 1 kilogram. But it's still the same amount of stuff, just a different unit. So notice there are two possible arrangements for conversion factors. We can have one kilometer over a thousand meters, 
or we can have a thousand meters over one kilometer. So how do you know which conversion factor to choose? We're going to choose the one that allows our units to cancel. So essentially, we're going to choose the one where the units on the given are the same as the units on the bottom of the fraction, or in the denominator of the fraction. This will make more sense when we put it into action. So let's look at an example. I want to convert 325 grams to kilograms. So first I write the given, which in this case is the number I'm trying to convert, 325 grams. Then I select the proper conversion factor. So I have two choices here. I know my conversion factor needs to include grams and kilograms because I'm trying to convert from grams to kilograms, but I could write it this way or I could write it this way with kilograms on top. How do I know which one to choose? I want to choose the one that's going to allow my units to cancel. So if I choose the one with grams in the denominator, Notice that our grams will cancel with our grams when we do the multiplication. So I'm going to choose this version of the conversion factor. Then I'm going to cancel my units and solve. So when I multiply, my grams will cancel, and I'll get 0.325 kilograms. At this point, you should ask, ask yourself some questions. First of all, do the units cancel correctly? Well, yes, they do. We already saw that. So, check. Does the answer have the correct unit? Yep, we wanted to convert to kilograms. We're all good there. Does the numerical value seem reasonable? Well, we know that kilograms are much, much bigger than grams. Therefore, we should have far fewer kilograms than we had grams. So that also gets checked. So it looks like we're good on this one. We'll have many more opportunities to practice unit conversions in class, so for now I want to move on to temperature units. We'll talk way more about temperature in the coming weeks, but just to start out with, the SI unit for temperature is Kelvin, which is abbreviated with a capital K. We'll also often use Celsius, as we don't have any thermometers that measure Kelvin, we'll always be measuring in Celsius and converting to Kelvin. So Celsius isn't an SI unit, but it's a very convenient unit for our purposes. The conversion is very simple here. Since the Kelvin scale and the Celsius scale are not a proportional scale, you simply need to add 273 to your Celsius temperature to get the Kelvin temperature. Now let's move on to the second and final objective in this video, how to make proper measurements in chemistry. We're going to start with measurements of length. With any measurement, it's crucial that we estimate the final digit of the measurement. So for instance, if we're measuring the length of this black bar here, we know for sure that our measurement's going to be 1 point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But notice it kind of falls between the 9 and the 10, or the 9 and the 2 for the next centimeter. So I'm going to estimate that final digit as a 5, giving us a length of 1.95 centimeters, 5 being our estimated digit. Notice I also included a unit, no naked numbers in chemistry, all numbers must be wearing their units. If the bar had fallen right on the line, like in this case, we actually can include a 0 at the end of the measurement. This tells us that we know for sure that the measurement is, in this case, 3.123. And the next digit we can say is actually a zero. We're saying that it's right on that line there. So our length measurement is 3.30 centimeters. Again, zero is our estimated digit, and we include a unit. When measuring volume, there's a couple things to keep in mind. First, we always want to use a graduated cylinder. Do not use a beaker, do not use a flask, or you will suffer my wrath. We'll talk about this in class and actually look at this glassware, so don't worry. You want to read from the bottom of the meniscus. So what's the meniscus? Well, 
if you've ever poured liquid into a narrow tube, you might notice that the liquid starts to crawl up the sides and make this kind of curved shape. That's the meniscus. You want to read from the bottom of the meniscus. That's how you're going to get an accurate measurement. And just like our measurements before, you want to estimate your final digit. So for instance, let's take this measurement. We know it's going to start with a 3, so it's going to be 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 36. And we estimate our final digit. It's about halfway between the 6 and the 7, so I'm going to call that 36.5. So we get a volume of 36.5. Five is our estimated digit and milliliters is our unit. Again, if the measurement falls right on the line, we'll add a zero. In this case, we have 40, 1, 2, 3. And since it falls right on that line, our estimated digit is a zero. So we get 40.3, or 43.0, uh, excuse me, milliliters. Milliliters is our unit. And finally, let's measure temperature. When measuring temperature, first of all, you never want to touch the bottom or the sides of the container with the thermometer. The bottom and the sides of the container usually has a different temperature than the contents of the container. Uh, this is especially true if the container is on a hot plate. If you touch the bottom of the container with the thermometer, you're really measuring the temperature of the hot plate, not the temperature of the contents of the container. And again, we're going to estimate our final digit. We do this with all measurements. So, take this thermometer. We know our measurement will start with 8. And it's going to be 80, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 87. And it's about halfway between the 7 and the 8. So we're going to call that 87.5. So 87.5, 5 is our estimated digit. And degrees Celsius is our unit. And again, if the um, mercury or the alcohol in the thermometer were right on the line, we would include a zero at the end of the measurement. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's quickly review our goals. First, we learned to identify the proper SI units and prefer, perform unit conversions. Then, we learned how to perform measurements to the proper degree of precision, always estimating the last digit of our measurement.